Hi everyone, I'm so honored to be invited to HDC 2020 and give you some news about Cox Engine in graphics. I'm Hua Bing from Cocos team. Today I want to show you our in-development project, a new Cocos 3D game engine powered by the next generation graphics backends. Uh, it's the Cocos Creator version 3. Most of you may know Cocos Engine from Cocos 2DX, which was the most popular 2D game engine for mobile games. And in 2016, we released the Cocos Creator, a WYSIWYG game editor, provide features like entity component architecture and data driven. It mainly focuses on production efficiency and the collaboration between developers and designers. As you can see, there have been a lot of upgrades from Cocos 2DX. In today's graphics panel, I'm going to focus on core renderer level design, which will be landed in the new version, Cocos Creator 3.0. Before we dive into the renderer, let me show you some core designs of Cocos Creator version 3. Open source, physically based rendering cross platforms. Those are also core values Cocos Creator wants to deliver to our developers. First of all, Cocos Creator is a 100% open source game engine. You can find and fork our script engine and native engine on GitHub. You can customize any part of the engine to fit your own need. After setting up the engine used in editor, it will build a game package using this customized engine. You can literally control everything in your game package for any platform, as you can see in this graph. And secondly, our engine is designed for physically based rendering, aka PBR. The design of light component, camera component, and our standard material all follow PBR conventions and the calculations. The light is based on a physical mat matrix color temperature and the light power. So when the artists set up the environment, they can simulate sunlight, candle, or other real-world light sources using the above metrics. We currently support directional light, sphere light, and spotlight. The camera is using SPS exposure with configurable aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. This will let you simulate a real-world camera easily. After set up different configurations, you can see the result instantly in the editor's camera preview. At last, with the standard physical based material, we can have very nice and realistic rendering results. At the left, you can see a helmet rendered with the full PBR material, along with the material's configuration panel. The right side images are input textures used to render this helmet, including albedo, normal, metallic, roughness, emissive, AO, and IBO environment map from the skybox. Physically based rendering is implemented mainly in shader, so there is no CPU heavy lifting here, and we have improved the algorithm to run smoothly on mid to all low-end devices. And finally, Cox Creator supports developers to publish cross-platform games to App Gallery, Google Play, App Store, web browsers, and almost all instant gaming platforms including Baddance Minigame, Huawei Quick Game, WeChat Minigame, etc. Upon all these platforms, we are using different rendering backend implementations to support them. Web and instant gaming platforms all provide WebGL graphics APIs. And on native platforms, we are using Metal for Apple devices and Vulkan for other platforms like Huawei App Gallery. Then the rendering backend provides a unified graphics API to the upper level engine. At last, higher level APIs are provided by engine modules, such as scene graph, assets, components, etc. With Cox Creator, you can create your game with one code base and publish to the most vast mobile platforms. To wrap up the three core designs, 100% open source you have total control over your game package. With physically based rendering, you can create stunning looking characters and visuals. Cross-platform publish ensures largest coverage on mobile platforms and reaches as most users as possible. So after the brief introduction of the game engine design, let's get into the main topic today. How we implement a renderer for modern graphics backends like Vulkan and Metal. A little bit background. 
If you don't know much about Course Creator, the current version 2.x is mainly for 2D games with limited 3D features. And in version 3, we have rewrote the whole renderer and provided a lot more 3D features to target a full 3D game engine. The renderer design in version 3 has several core concepts for making it compatible to almost all modern, modern mobile environments and as powerful as possible. The multi-backend abstraction I showed before supports from OpenGL ES2 to Vulkan and Metal. Our graphics wrapper provides API similar to Vulkan so that we can use more modern features to release the power of next-generation graphics backends. Our users can use GLSL 300 of traders and we will compile it for all backends. At last, our renderer is based on a programmable rendering pipeline, which allows maximum customization over rendering process. Now, let's take a deeper view into the renderer design. We already support many graphics backends. It's for the best compatibility consider consideration. On web, we support both WebGL 1 and WebGL 2, so that all modern browsers can run the game while with WebGL 2, the game will run faster. And of course, Vulkan and Metal can provide the best performance and rendering results. The GFX module up, uh, at the middle is a wrapper level to adapt all graphics backend and provide unified graphics APIs, which are similar to Vulkan's API design. Then our render pipeline and all renderer related modules can share the same code base. Furthermore, the engine can benefit more and more from modern graphics backends because we are trying to uh, try our best to release the power of modern graphics APIs. Only then, we adapt the renderer to all the graphics backends. This leads to the next slide, how we can ensure everything works fine in older backend. For example, for WebGL 1, it's through the adaptation level of GFX WebGL 1. And to be more precise, we can take a look at our render pipeline and its data flow. The right part of this graph is the core renderer process from render pipeline to render stage. Other elements at the left are data-related objects. When we start to uh, render a scene, all models in the scene will be passed to the render pipeline after scene calling. Uh, the, the render flow will start a render pass. Then it will pass all called submodels to the render stage, where all render information will be extracted. That means input assembler and pipeline state in the command buffers. Each command buffer corresponds to a subpass. Input assembler defines the geometry of the model. Pipeline state defines the GPU state related, uh, GPU state -related setups, including shaders, descriptor sets, depth stencil state, etc, etc. Now the interesting part is that all yellow elements, command buffer, pipeline state, input assembler, render pass, subpass, all of them are built in Vulkan, but absent in WebGL. What we have done in GFX WebGL is to implement these types using GL basic commands so that we can safely use them in the renderer. The API adaptation is only part of the story. Shaders also need to be ported because different backends use different shading languages. Here's how we solve it. Users write their shaders in GLSL 300 ES format. During publish process, the editor will translate the shader to GLSL 100 to be used in older backend. And then with Spur V tools, we can compile GSL to Spur V format to be used in Vulkan. At last, we need Spur V cross to compile Spur V shader to metal shading language for Apple devices. It seems complicated, but it permits users to write one unified shader and run upon all platforms. All the explanation seems very abstract. I just want to show you how um, two small examples so that you can see what we have achieved currently. We are trying to use more GPU uh, computing capacity to improve the performance. For example, our skeleton animation is running with GPU skinning calculation, and models and animations can also be merged into one draw call with GPU instancing. Here is 1,000 instances running at 30 FPS on 
low-end devices. Our particle system is also using GPU to run the simulation. The left side video is running CPU particle system. The FPS drops very rapidly, while 100 GPU particle system at right can run at 48 FPS on low-end devices. Both GPU skeleton animation and uh, GPU particle system support all platforms, including ancient backends. For the calculation can be running on GPU, we are using flow texture on most backends. But on OpenGL ES2 and WebGL1, the feature is not available. So uh, we pack floats into RGBA8 textures. Then we can extract the data to be processed from the texture in shader. At last, the upper-level render pipeline is fully customizable. Currently, the built-in pipeline is a basic forward uh, render pipeline, including forward state, uh, shading stage and tone mapping stage but the user can easily add a post-process stage. He can also customize the scene coloring logic into, uh, in the render flow. Until now, I just revealed a little bit about the renderer design in Course Creator version 3. I hope this can attract developers from all over the world and help them create great games. We also want to help them, uh, these games to publish to Huawei App Gallery and have huge success. So, the final part of my talk today is about collaborations between Huawei and Cocos. We see App Gallery as a very powerful competitor to Google Play. It's always good to have more competitions for the consumers and the developers. So we want to fully support HMS ecology constructions. We have already released version 2.4, which supports direct publish to App Gallery. It's an all-in-one integration. You can even upload your, game, uh, your app uh, directly to App Gallery inside the Course Creator Editor. For technical and research side collaboration, we are building our engine architecture with Huawei. Uh, and Huawei have many internal teams with the same goals as game engines. For example, the CGK team also targets providing great visual experience in games. As a result, we plan to integrate some of their powerful modules like uh, anti-aliasing, occlusion cutting, screen space uh, post effects. We are also integrating AR engine so that users can develop uh, um, AR games using Course Creator version 3. We hope collaboration between Huawei and Cocos can help Cocos bring more graphic features and higher performance to our developers. And finally, a conclusion of my talk today. The new 3D engine, Cocos Creator version 3, will be available in 2020. It's a 100% open source engine. It supports uh, the most vast mobile platforms. Its renderer is designed for physically based rendering. With the uh, powerful multi-backend design, we are pushing the graphics performance and visuals using the next generation graphics APIs. And finally, Collaboration with Huawei is accelerating the development of this great 3D game engine. So, dear developers, please stay tuned, and we can't wait to see games made by you, our creative developers. So, if you are interested, please follow us or contact us through these channels. Thank you very much.